move on to the next section called the nature of roots. This is the most interesting uh, topic, the nature of roots. Right, it is part of algebra, it's coming back strongly in the caps uh, syllaba. It is important that we should understand it as well, the nature of roots. It is important that we understand the topic of root team. Obunjalo bama roots. Ama roots in nature. If you look at a person, your friend, for example, you can tell who to mundo in nature in jan. So whenever we look at the nature of roots, 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 intercepts. In this particular case, when we took, when we look at the, the roots, we've got different types of graphs. If I look at this graph, if this is point A and this is point B, I'll give you another graph. This is point A, this is point B, this is point C. This is point D. I'll give you another graph again. Okay. This is point A. This is point B. This is point C. This is point D. This is point E. This is point F. Let's look at graph number one. After that, we'll look at graph number two. Then we'll look at graph number three. Remember, the topic is the nature of roots. Umjalobama roots. Let us understand what are roots first. Ama roots are nothing else but the x-intercept. When you look at this graph, we've got point A and point B. Which one is a root there? A root there is not point A, it is point B, the x-intercept, x-cut. This graph has one root. This is a straight line graph. It, is, has, it has an equation y is equals to uh, mx plus c. This one is a parabola or a quadratic graph, quadratic, quadratic. This is quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c. We are doing question one, algebra, which deals with quadratics. So this is the general equation of this one is y is equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, quadratics. This one is a cubic function that we deal with Masenza e calculus. It's y is equals to, let's call it px cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. Right. Look at the first graph. This graph has got only one root, which is point B in this case. When you look at the graph number two, the quadratic function, it has got how many roots? One, two, where point A and point D becomes our roots. There are two there. Look at point, at graph number three, the cubic graph. In the roots of one, two, three. So point A, point C, and point F becomes our roots. One of my roots is now regular, and we call them zeros. A, C, and F are roots. As it is in this scissor, when we're dealing with this section, is to understand which this is x to the power one, therefore we're going to have one root. This is x to the power two, therefore we're going to have two roots. This is x to the power three, therefore we're going to have three roots. So that becomes important when you deal with your functions as well. It guides you. Fortunately, in mathematics, we put the scope into, into a particular focal point. So when you talk of the nature of roots, we don't look at all the graphs. We only look at the quadratic function. Remember, it's question one. It's all about the quadratics. We only focus on this type of graph, which is the parabola or the quadratic function. So whenever you see the topic, the nature of roots, think of this function, the, 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 the quadratic graph. Note these other ones. So the roots that we'll be looking at here are the roots of a quadratic graph. Now, they can only behave in three ways. They only behave in three ways, these types of graph. They only behave in three ways, only three ways in which these three graphs can behave. So the nature here can come out again the rain that. Number one, we can have something like this. Our graphs can behave in this form, like the one that we've just shown. Number two, our graphs can also behave in this particular form. Let me just rub this one out quickly. It can also behave in this form. Ah, right. Number three, it can also behave in this form. This is number two and this is number three. Remember one thing. What is it that we use to determine the nature of roots? Zinesi seven zisai ukbona ubunjalo bama roots. Kumbulo kuti kumuntu upeka indlela the behavior ngathi oh lo uthanda ibhola kusho to umuntu ama sports lo in nature akhe umuntu othanda ku outdoor life thanda ukuya ngaphandle 
But in nature of roots, there's a tool that we use to determine in HII. We call it the discriminant. We use the discriminant to determine the nature of roots. We use this symbol for the discriminant, delta, which is the same as b squared minus 4ac. Remember one thing and one thing only. Where do we usually see this b squared minus 4ac? In the previous lessons, we've seen this when we're talking about this equation. x is equals to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So the discriminant is usually under the square root sign of a, 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 a quadratic formula when we're solving for x there, when we're looking for roots. So this is a discriminant. Now, we, did, we use the... We determine the net of roots by using the discriminant. It is the one that determines the net of roots, our discriminant, our p squared minus 4ac. How? Graph number one. When you are solving for x in lower grades, suppose could you solve for x, you are given a problem like this, for example, uh, let me write it here, x minus x plus 1 into x minus 3 equal to 0. Solve for x here. What would it do? Simple. You're multiplying two things that give us zero. So x is equals to minus one, or x is equals to three. When you were doing this, you were actually looking for roots. What you are solving from grade eight, grade nine, these are the roots that you apply here. It makes it step by step. We can't put everything at the same time to you, but it leads you to these graphs. So in other words, this is this would be this would have been minus one, and that would have been what? Three. So how many roots do we see there? In other words, how many x-intercepts do we see there? There are two. So in this particular case, you write what you see. There are two real. These roots are not the same. So they are unequal. Take note of unequal. These two, these roots are two, are real, and they are unequal. Now, these roots will have something to do with the discriminant. Now, if the value here is positive, in other words, if b squared minus 4ac is positive, it is greater than zero, you will always get two real and unequal roots. So the discriminant will tell you the type of roots that I will get. If my discriminant, if this value that is under the square root sign, if it is positive, I definitely know that I will get two real and unequal roots. What if the value here is not positive, it is equal to zero? If b squared, b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, this is the situation that you'll we'll, that we'll get. You are going to have two real and equal roots. Equal roots. Two real and equal roots. The difference between this one and this one, they're both two. They're both real. This becomes the difference. These ones are in, unequal. These ones are equal. This is the situation, for example, when you're doing your your factor position in lower grades. Suppose you had a problem like this, x minus 2 into x minus 2 equal to 0. How would you go about solving this kind of problems? This is what you will do. This side, I will have x is equals to 2, or x is equals to 2 again. So what do we have here? So number of two, two, anjani, afanayo. This is why if you get here, Helendo, ET in the A root, if you consider the same part, my session appears also. So we say in number roots out two afanayo. Now it helps to understand this because when you even go to your calculus, when you do your cubic functions, these types of graphs, you might have something like this as well. And you must realize that there there are three roots. It's only that these two are the same. This is two plus one. So there are two roots and another one. So there, there are three roots there. We must be able to see that it's only that these other two are the same. So whenever this is a turning point, you must know that there are two x-intercepts there. So this is the situation. When you're given a problem like this, you get amaruts, amabil, afanayo. That is where it will be a turning point. So whenever the discriminant is equal to zero, you will get the situation. If this number that is under the square root sign, the discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac, if this number it is equals to zero, you are going to have two real and unequal roots. So it is important that we should understand that. Right. Number three. Number three, I want us to move on to the third one. Now, we have talked about when this is positive. We've talked about when this is equal to zero. Now, we want to talk about when this is negative. Now, if our b squared 
minus 4ac is less than 0. It is negative. Then we know that we are going to have no real roots. No real roots. Others will say we'll have imaginary roots. It's the same thing. No real roots, non-real roots, imaginary roots. All those mean one and the same thing. Right. So these three diagrams becomes key in understanding the nature of roots. If the discriminant is positive, we are going to have this situation where you'll have two roots, two real and unequal roots. If our discriminant is equal to zero, we are going to have two real and equal roots. If our discriminant is negative, we are going to have no roots because there is no square root of a negative number. Once we put a negative number, this will be undefined. We cannot define that, so we can't find roots there. So we call that non-real roots. There are no real roots or imaginary roots. So that is the nature of roots. Now, when doing the nature of roots, you've got to put this in your system so that you can be able to answer any other question that will come out from the nature of roots. Now, let's look at the type of questions that come out when we deal with the nature of roots. Right, we're given a situation here. A solution of a quadratic equation is given by this problem. X is equal to minus 2 plus or minus square root of 2p plus 5 all over 7. This is what we're given. Whenever I look at this, I think of this. I think of x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I think of it. That is similar to this one. Okay, what is this saying to me? This is in the staying in the, in the place of b. b squared minus 4ac, which is our discriminant, it has been replaced by 2p plus 5. So what is this saying to us? This here stands for our discriminant. Remember that it is the discriminant that we use to determine the nature of roots. In this case, it is the discriminant. And we know if this value here, the discriminant, is positive, we're going to have two real and unequal roots. If this discriminant is equal to zero, we're going to have two real and, uh, and equal roots. If this discriminant here is negative, we are not going to have roots. We are going to have no real roots. Right. So this is what we use to determine the nature of roots, the discriminant. In this case, it, in this case b squared minus 4ac was replaced by 2p plus 5, which we call it our discriminant in this particular case. Let's read the questions. For which value of values? This one does not, is not specific. We don't want to tell you whether it is one value or many values. So for which value of values of p, that, that is where p is, will the equation have two equal roots? Those become my keyword. These become my keyword, non-real. Equal, unequal. So what is the keyword that I see there? For which values of p will the equation have equal? These become my, 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 key, my, 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 my keyword there, equal roots. What do I know when we've got equal roots? Equal roots, two equal roots. This is the diagram that we're talking about, where we've got equal roots. It means that we're going to have two real and equal roots. That is what we have. What do you know about the discriminant there? The discriminant must be equal to zero. So what is the discriminant in this case? Remember, we're looking for P, and this is the discriminant. Since we've got equal roots, then the discriminant must be equal to zero. So that's what we write. We know that, number, for number one, we know that our discriminant in this case, 2p plus 5, must be equal to 0. Why that? Because we're told that we've got equal roots. Whenever we've got equal roots, the discriminant must be equal to 0. That's what we are writing. If they say unequal roots, we're going to have our discriminant greater than 0. If they say uh, non-real roots, we're going to have our discriminant less than 0. That's all that we do, as simple as that. Mathematics is simple, especially if simplified. Let's find for P. The question is looking for the value of values of P. That's what we're looking for. Once you put it like this, piece of cake, you can find your P. 2P will then be equal to 5. I'm looking for, for P. You divide by 2 on both sides. If I divide by 2 here, this 2 will go. I'll be left with P equals to 5. Oh, this should be minus. So it's minus 5 over 2. Avoid to, to, to not to write the negative sign because without it, everything will be wrong. So that is the value of our P. That's how the first question, uh, we, we respond to the first question. Let's look at the second question. Question number two. For which values of P will this equation have no real roots? Can you see the keyword there? 
the keyword becomes no real roots. So you look for those keywords, you look for those keys. So this, in this particular case, this become my keyword. I think of my, my three diagram. This one, unequal roots. I've got two unequal roots where the discriminant is positive. If I've got two real roots, the discriminant will be equal to zero. If I've got no real roots, the discriminant will be negative. So I go and take my discriminant, I take it out there, I make it negative because there are no roots. I know that what is under the square root of sign will be negative if, the, if, if, if there are no roots. So I take my 2p plus 5, I make it negative, less than 0. Then I solve for p because we're looking for p in this particular case. So 2p will be less than minus 5. We divide both sides by what? By 2. Therefore, my p will be less than minus 5 over 2. This is how we go about doing the the nature of roots, umjalobama roots. It's all about these three diagrams and underlining the keywords here. Uh, unequal, if, if, if the discriminant is negative, no real roots. If the discriminant is equal to zero, I'm going to have two real and equal roots. That is the nature of the roots. <laughs>